gonna shout her down to the graveyard Gonna say a prayer, gonna pay my dues I've been running wild ever since I left Virginia Trying to find a face that might remind me See the sunlight rising in the mountains On jazz red in the morning sky I know that the world is every steady change Lord, give me wings so I could fly away to life And let's go at What is going on YouTube? Welcome to episode one of our new series, Psychopaths. This is something that I've been mentally working on for quite a while now. I'm excited to finally get out and start filming. I thought I'd start easy by doing the first episode in my hometown of Wind Lake, Wisconsin. I'm gonna be riding the Seven Waters Trail, which goes from Muskego, Wisconsin, all the way to Burlington. One thing that I really like about this trail is that you can connect to tons of other trails so essentially you could do hundreds of miles based off of one, one path. So for instance, if you're doing the White River Trail in Burlington, which is 14 or 15 miles, connect to this one for 19. This connects to Milwaukee's Oak Leaf Trail, which is 80 or 90 miles if you do the full loop, which connects to countless other trails. I think that this series is gonna evolve quite a bit over the next few months. So uh, I'm gonna start off by saying, I wanna hear what you guys think at the end of this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this series, what I can do to improve it and make it better because I would love to hear your guys' opinions. So anyways, for episode one, I'm gonna be stopping at one historical spot that I actually hit every time I am on this, this path. And then for stop two, I'm actually meeting up with a good friend of mine and we're gonna go explore something all the way at the end of this trail that I think you guys will find very interesting and it is definitely unique. So let's get to it. This is episode one of Cycle Path. In episode one, I'm riding my state all road 6061. If you're interested in seeing more about this bike, I have several videos on the channel that you can check out. On the first stop of my ride, I'll be stopping on Hague Park Hill, which is named after Civil War hero Hans Christian Hague. Hague was a Norwegian immigrant and settled here in the area in 1840. He was killed in 1863 at the Battle of Chickamauga during the American Civil War and buried here at Norway Cemetery. He was the highest ranking officer from Wisconsin to die in the Civil War. But to me, that's only part of Haig's story. Not only was he a soldier, but an outspoken anti-slavery activist and the leader of Wisconsin's Wide Awakes, which was an anti-slave catcher militia. He was also elected commissioner of the Wapan State Prison, which is interesting because he would risk his career on several occasions to provide shelter to federal fugitives who helped slaves escape. His dedication to freedom and equality is truly inspiring, and it's hard to imagine how much potential we lost with him. What radical changes would he have inspired in our country? Haig would die at the young age of 33, but he easily led the life of 100 men. 
So this is one of three statues, identical statues that exist. There's this one in the town of Norway, one in his hometown in the country of Norway, and then there's one at the Wisconsin state capitol that was actually vandalized. Um, it was torn down by a tow truck and then beheaded and thrown in Lake Monona. Something to do with justice or something or other by tearing down a statue of a very hardcore abolitionist. And the state of Wisconsin actually received a grant to repair the one in Madison. Uh, the head is still missing. It's out. No idea where it went. So they actually made a mold of this one and then made a new head for him. And he is standing in front of the Wisconsin State Capitol once again. All right, there's actually a Strava segment coming up that I like to test myself on a couple times a year. It's a hill climb, which is always kind of the best test for fitness. I really hope this series doesn't turn into me trying to break my best Strava times. Of course, there's a ton of wind. God, I haven't done that one in a while. It's super windy out. Why, hello. All right, for this ride, I got my buddy Kyle here. Hey we're, we're gonna ride out to Burlington. We're gonna see if we can find the old lost Mormon village of Vori. There's some plates out there, I heard. There are, there are some plates hiding somewhere. We'll explain plates later. <laughs> As you head south on the Seven Waters Trail, you wander through the towns of Waterford and Rochester. These segments are my absolute favorite on the ride. The scenery is the best the trail has to offer, and the asphalt segments aren't too bad either. If you really feel like exploring, make sure you get off the main trail for some single track in Case Eagle Park and Saller Woods. Do you want some corn? Yeah, dude, I'd love some. Yeah, I'll take some. Come on. Can you give me some corn, please? Take the f***ing corn! <laughs> <laughs> they call me Big Jim Corns a bunch. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you see that guy down there? Holy shit, is that Justin Beaver's house? I hate it. <laughs> Quick fact, I've actually known Kyle longer than Andy. I also went to school with him. And we were in a sick metal band together. We are changing the name from Ace Bike Media to Colin and Kyle Bike Media. Yeah. Oh, we're even finishing each other's oh, sentences. Yeah, that's so <laughs> us. Oh man, that's us, man. You can cycle cross? Yeah, dude. Check us out. Watch show me. Watch. Show me how hard you cycle cross. Ah! That was good, but you missed the turn. All right. Holy shit. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What is it? What do you mean, what is it? You can't hop that? I thought you cycle cross. Sorry. <laughs> Whip I don't know if you noticed I whipped that. I did. Okay. I like six bucks. Oh, the flat! That's some burrs. Thank you. Nice. Golf course. Lame. Did you, go, did you ever go to Burlington Skate Park back in the day? Uh, once or twice, yeah. It used to be like, literally like right here. Oh, it's not here anymore? No, no, they, they tore it down. But uh, when we were like 14, me and Andy found like a pound of weed under the ramps. 
Really? Yeah. What were you doing under the ramps? Uh, looking for weed. <laughs> no, I don't know. We, I think it was like a really cold day when we went under there to get away from the wind and we found this bag of weed. And then we tried to sell it to Andy's mom as a joke. And she made us turn it into the police. You had to like actually go to the police department with No, you? no, I think his mom actually called the police okay. and they came here. So she's a narc, so I'll never trust her again. <laughs> Hey Kyle, how do you feel about riding in the rain? Well Colin, you told me that we were going to be good. It looks like we're going to be riding through a thunderstorm. There's only one thing you need to read on this, alright? One thing. Erected in 1992. That's it. Those Mormons sure know a thing about erections. <laughs> this is actually sort of what we're here for. I had no idea. I was, I'm vaguely aware of the Mormon religion, like how it's structured a little bit. Um, I knew about Nauvoo, Illinois. I actually found a Nauvoo, Illinois Mormon brick in my yard when I was digging out my pump track. That might be in one of my videos. But yeah, so Mormons helped build this town, but more specifically, the lost town of Vori, which is what we're gonna go explore right now. You should just start reading the entire thing to everybody. I'm not gonna read this. It just basically says the Mormon community helped build this area of uh, Wisconsin and Joseph Smith was murdered in Illinois and then a guy who wanted to take over that church also got murdered. And I think he another died thing here. that we need to understand though too is that we're going to get murdered. If you turn <laughs> this way and then you look behind us, we're coming up on a 50 mile an hour yeah. thunderstorm here. I've, I've survived 60 mile an hour. In my next batshit crazy but absolutely true story, we dive into James Strang's town of Vori. James Strang had claimed to be the rightful successor to Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon religion, after his assassination in 1844, and proclaimed Vori to be the home of the Mormon people. It is here where James Strang claimed to have found buried golden plates, much like Joseph Smith did, thus making him a prophet sent from God. The tablets were allegedly the final testament by an ancient ruler named Raja Manchu of Orito, and an angel appeared to Strang to instruct him where to find them. He took witnesses with him for the discovery, at a location eventually known to his followers as the Hill of Promise. All right, so we're 12, a little over 12 miles in, and we just stopped here to pray real quick. You can see Kyle's on his knees, worshiping. Sorry, bleep. So this is the Mormon Strangite Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints church thing. Church. church thing. Church. There's more up the road. All right, we're good. We are in business. The story takes an even stranger turn when Strang relocates his church from Vori, a place he claimed was a holy land, to Beaver Island, which is an island in northern Lake Michigan. It is there where he declares himself king and becomes the only man to be crowned king in the United States. But that only lasts a few short years because the locals hate the shit out of him and he begins to piss off the 13th president of the United States, Millard Fillmore. On June 16, 1856, James Strang was shot in the back by two former followers. The King of Beaver Island would be taken back here to Vori, where he would die three weeks later. The perpetrators were fined $1.25 and never faced any punishment for the crime. All right, still didn't find what exactly what we're looking for. We found the old Vori Cemetery, and I'm just gonna ride over here and see if I see anything. All right, man. We are looking for the Hill of Promise, and it's not very easy to find, apparently. All right, old Vori. So we uh. were just here, so we totally screwed this up. So the Hill of Promise, we could, so if oh. we're right here, it's we hike straight way. back there. But I don't think you can. It looks like that's all that guy's land. Eh. Maybe. 
in memory of James J. String, our beloved prophet and, and king in God's kingdom. That's right. I read a report, Kyle, that said this dude was the only person ever crowned king in the United States. Really? This guy. Are you going to crown your tire flat? Um, yeah, we're going to have to stop at Quick Trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, what is this? Is this a geocat? No, what is this? This is weird. What the? It's a pool filter, bro. Oh, uh, no, it's a chunk it. A... Oh, for a dog? Chuck it, yeah. Dog frisbee. Oh. Would have been cooler if it was a geocache. Would have been, but it's a chunk it. <laughs> Kyle doesn't want to say that, but he just made a joke. He said, I can't believe we've vorheed the rain. Because it it's just been thundering for like, what, 20 minutes now? Yeah, probably about a half hour. I don't know if we're allowed to go over here, but we're looking for the Hill of Promise. Cracked.com wrote a fantastic and comical piece about Strang titled The Epic Death of the Mad King of Lake Michigan, which I will link below in the description if you'd like to read the full story. So the, plate, the plates were found on the bank of the White River right here. The Tower of Zion Church. And we're right here. We just don't know how to get across to that. So we're going to give up on this. Unfortunately, we were going to try and get to this Hill Promise, but it's really weird. There's a lot of private land. I know there's a way to get back there, but we're not going to do it today. It would have been cool. So it says right here, the town existed from 1844 to 1850, which isn't too long. They abandoned this town because property, property prices were too high. So that's usually what you do when you have a, a holy land or a promised land, you abandon it because it's too expensive. Stuff costs money, bro. Yeah. And you can't make too much money yeah. when you're all just on the just, hill of promise. Listen, God, you'll understand. <laughs> These taxes are insane. <laughs> all right, so it's a bummer to have to give this one up, especially with storms rolling in. We're not finding any plates today. We are gonna find a that's, thunderstorm. We're definitely gonna get rained on. Gonna cross after this car. Yeah, and now, for the Kyle Havlicek weather report. We are in trouble. <laughs> Kyle, how's that bike running? Good, as long as I'm not making any quick movements. <laughs> I'm putting a lot of the weight on the rear tire right now. <laughs> As we made our way back into Burlington, the looming thunderstorm meant this ride would soon become unforgettable. There was no chance we were going to outrun it, especially with an almost entirely deflated front tire. We stood and watched as the picturesque Midwest town became consumed by the storm. getting really low and it's starting to rain and I'm walking tires too bad but luckily I know of a pump up ahead cycle cross practice all right it did say rain around 6 30 or 7 but it's 4 30 and it's pouring uh-oh uh-oh Kyle I have no turning ability with this tire Mm. All, right. All right, so the tire was really bad, and of course the gas station air pump was out. So we came into a Dunham's Sporting Goods, and they were super cool, and they hooked us up with a floor pump. Shout out to Dunham's in Burlington. Hello? Ready? It's wet. She, she's a little little nasty out there. Yeah. Let's do it. Make the door open for me. <laughs> door, please. See, it works. Ah! So this is gravel riding, Kyle. This is gravel. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we just had like four bang energy drinks. <laughs> Not looking for a sponsor though, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> I hope the back of my shirt's as bad as, as, bad as yours. Ha! Having fun? Oh yeah, dude. Loving it. God, I have such horrible visibility right now. 
Despite the intense rain and front tire issues, this ride was everything you could ask for. We ended up with 26 miles, lots of laughs, and plenty of adventure. I have some great rides and stories planned for the future, and episode 2 is already filmed, and in episode 2 I will be hitting the dirt with a special guest for another wild Wisconsin tale. I really hope you liked episode 1 of Psychopaths. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> My shoes are literally like five pounds a piece. Yep. Rabbit, Come on, rabbit, just dip into the woods, you're safe. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> right, don't run in front of my bike. Yeah. Alright, there you go. There you go. There you go. That's how you know you did it. I mean there's really no point in wearing these.